I have always wondered how Newton and Leibniz both derived equations of differential calculus at the same time. A concept can be devised by a number of people, but from history we get that only one at a time gets the equations right, while they both contributed to the field of mathematics. What does the situation mean? That they both learnt the equations from another source and made it their own. Listen, it's ridiculous that two guys, one in the island of England, one on the island of England and one in Germany, came up with the same exact same discovery of differential calculus, which nobody had ever done before in Europe, at, in the same year, at the same time. It's ridiculous. What really happened is that calculus was discovered in, in India. It is known to have been discovered in India at least a century before these two individuals existed. And most likely it dates back to way before that. So the earliest known evidence of calculus, of infinite series, of differential calculus and so on, comes from the Kerala School of Mathematics, a century, more than a century before Newton and Leibniz claimed to have made this discovery. And at the time we had these so-called, what are they called? Jesuit priests who were uh, going around India and uh, trying to acquire various forms of Indian knowledge and wisdom. So the Jesuit priests are the scientists of the Vatican. They are priests. They are employed by the Vatican, but they go, they go around the world trying to acquire scientific knowledge. And they would bring it back to the West, and then it would be used in, in a variety of forms. So all of the, for instance, you have the Kepler's law of planetary motions, the three Kep Kepler's three laws of planetary motion, these three laws, he was able to come up with these three laws based on an enormous amount of astronomical data. That astronomical data came from India. It was Indian astronomical data that he examined and studied for a number of years. And on that, on the basis of that, he was able to come up with the Kepler's law, laws of planetary motion, the three laws. <coughs> Excuse me. Similarly, these two guys, Newton and Leibniz, I'm not saying they were not good scientists. Newton was one of the greats. And he said that if he has made any, any great uh, progress in science, it's because he stood on the shoulders of giants. He has made this statement. He has said this. Look it up. Standing on the shoulders of giants. Newton said that. But he did not identify the giants on whose shoulders he stood. So it's clear that all of this knowledge came from India. It's becoming more and more clear with every passing year, with more information coming out, that all of this knowledge this Indian scientific knowledge, whether, whether it is algebra, whether it's trigonometry, whether it's calculus, infinite series, whatever. All of that came out of India, made its way first into the Arabic world and sometimes straight into Europe, like in the case of, uh, of calculus. So that's what happened. All of, this, all of these are Indian inventions. Western science has progressed in leaps and bounds. And today it's the most advanced uh, science and technology in the world. It is all based on a foundation of Indian science from the uh, Middle Ages onwards. That's when the Europeans first came into contact with Indian uh, scientific literature. And that's what they absorbed, incorporated into their, um, their own uh, uh, academic system, I would say, and improved upon that slowly. That's what happened.